Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with another video, and you know what time of year it is. It's custom group summon time, baby, which means tier list. New updated tier list. So, I'm going to be breaking down every single character on the custom group summon in like a 5 to 10 second fashion, because if I spend like a minute on all of them, the video's going to be like an hour long. But I'll basically give you a quick cheat sheet to explain what the best characters are. Give you like one or two use cases for them or explain why their artifact might be something that you might want to consider picking up. Two caveats before we jump into it. One is the standard custom group summon spiel. Can't take Moonlight 5 stars, so can't take like New Moon, Luna, Death Dealer, right, right? No collaboration heroes, so no Rimuru, Tempest, no Dizzy from Guilty Gear. Limited characters have to be at least six months old and have had at least one rerun. So no Biblis, even though she's like seven months old, eight months old at this point. Hasn't had a rerun. So you can't take her. And then for Covenant Heroes, just got to be at least six months old if it is a non-limited red, green, or blue character. Which means Immortal Wukong is out because he's less than a month old. Birgit is out because I think she's like two or three months old. And sadly, Janua is out by like three weeks. So yeah, no Janua. That kind of sucks. Newest character for the RGBs here is Elvira in case you are wondering. Second caveat, as you can see here. This is taken from the E7 WC 2024 player rulebook. You can see on the topic of new hero bands, heroes and artifacts newly introduced from 722 or 812, right? So July 22nd or August 12th. These things are dates basically letting you know when new characters are coming. We have not gotten summer limited yet this year. They always do at least one. Sometimes they do two. So there is a very high chance because summer is usually a three week to four week event that maybe right here is going to be our window from July 22nd to like maybe like the third week of August. That's probably the window that the newest limited characters are coming in. So custom group summon here is probably trying to attempt to drain you of all of your covenant bookmarks and your sky stones to pick up stuff. And then you're not going to have anything on this and that's going to try to incentivize you to spend. What I'm getting at here, please use your resources wisely on this custom group summon. This is a pretty big tell that the summer units are coming very soon, as early as like a week and change from the recording of this video. So now let's jump into the custom tier list itself. Let me explain my tiers to you all. This is the same format we've used for the last group summon or two tier list. Goated artifacts. Basically, if you're an enfranchised or veteran player or whale player, these are the characters that have artifacts that you simply just cannot get enough of. They're just very, very strong artifacts that you'd want to have like six or ten copies of. Or you'd like to have like multiple copies of their artifacts at plus 30. Limited Heroes is as it says. These are characters you normally cannot get any other time of the year. The way that Smogate seems to be doing everything now is we release a new Limited. About a year later, it gets one rerun. After that one rerun, it goes on Custom Group Summit. It never gets a rerun ever again. So if any of these characters ever get a rework or a buff, that's it. Like, you, your only chance to pick them up is from Custom Group Summit. So for newer players, this is the tier I'd prioritize the highest outside of maybe one or two characters in Goaded Artifacts that are also limited. Characters you should own is self-explanatory. Whale Artifacts is as it says. They have an artifact that's very strong at plus 30. So you're basically choosing them for that artifact and you need a lot of copies of it for it to actually be worth it. Playable character artifact, again, self-explanatory. Only if nothing else, this is just if you want to max out your Pokedex, like you want to fill out the hero journal, by all means. But for most people, you're still better off just taking a character from like goaded artifacts or like limited heroes and just picking up extra copies of their artifacts. Already free, again, self-explanatory. And in case you want to see, these are all the characters that are not available. All right, so now that you know the tiers, let's just jump into it and I'll go again five to ten seconds explaining each character. Let's start with Goaded Artifacts. So I'm going to talk about Abigail and Robbie at the same time because the primary reason to choose both of them is the same. They both have artifacts that give damage as well as lifesteal, which is very, very important for bruisers. Abigail has Golden Rose, which is better for health scaling characters or like defense scaling characters, whereas Robbie has Sigurd Sight, which is better for attack scaling characters. And even after her rework, Ravi is still an attack scaling character. It's just your attack, or I'm sorry, your health gets converted to attack. So you're primarily better off building health percentage on the character. But overall, uh, Ravi has the attack scaling one for like Lone Crescent Bologna or like Martial Artist Ken. Overall, between the two of them, the artifact is a push. 
Sometimes one is better, sometimes is the other is better. I think Ravi has a bit more value overall between the two, as she is used in almost every facet of PvP and is fairly competent in those game modes, whereas Abigail's only really good in Guild War as well as Arena Offense. Cerise is probably still the number one overall choice on the Custom Group Summon. She is a limited character that is getting a skin, although she herself is not particularly very useful. The primary reason to take her is Guiding Light, which is the most important PvP artifact for the Ranger class in the whole game. There are so many Rangers in the game, such as Naqual, Lua, right, that just cannot really be used without it. Green Landy really wants it, right? Almost every single Ranger, even like Operator Segret, if you want to play that character, you're going to need Guiding Light. There's just, you can never have enough of them. I have like seven or eight copies laying around, uh, and I know people who have even more copies than that. And if you already have a ton, it's still worth picking her up because you might want to actually max out those Guiding Lights for the bonus attack as well as the stealth percentage. Yeah, Cerise overall, probably one of the mainstays. I don't ever think she'll ever come off of Custom Group Summon, uh, like top three list, just because Guiding Light's just that damn strong. And until they give us a real honest to goodness answer to stealth, that's not last piece Karin or like, you know, Milam, like something that just passively says your opponents can't get stealth point blank period. This character is just going to always be up here. Charlotte, another character with an amazing artifact. She has Elbrus Ritual Sword. Elbrus Ritual Sword is like the backbone of a lot of turn two playstyles. Navy Captain Landy, Abyssal Euphine, Bellion, Green Armin. If you want to play any of these characters, then you're going to need to choose Charlotte just to get Elbrus Ritual Sword. Like Guiding Light, I have like seven to eight copies of it, and it's still not enough. It's probably like a top five artifact in the game alongside of Guiding Light. And then the newcomer here is Ocean Breeze Lulica. Another limited character, very good in PvP, assuming that your opponent doesn't have Sea Phantom Paldus, which is on a lot of defenses for like Guild Wars or uh, regular arena. Still pretty solid, even though, uh, even in World Arena, assuming that that character is banned or you have access to it yourself. Still very, very good cleanser, good at countering certain non attack skill characters. The main reason she's here, though, is Soul Constellation, which is probably the best Soul Weaver artifact I would think currently in the game. Gives you a bunch of free ER. Gives you a lot of tempo and combat readiness pushing. So it's just super, super useful. Death Dealer Ray can use it. Lulika herself can use it. Shuna can use it. Desert Jewel Basar can use it, right? So many Soul Weavers in the game. Uh, Simple Angelica. All really, really great with this artifact. So it's one of those ones where I feel like you just want to have a ton of copies of the thing. This is probably going to be one of the ones that I for sure end up taking on my custom group summon as well. So let's move into limited heroes now ahmed kind of all right in certain pvp but like let's be real moon bunny and paul just counter her so she's definitely seen better days no real pve usage her artifact is only good on her dn not super good in pvp but still really strong in pve for like nightmare raid or abyss if you're still stuck on that advent for example a company artifact is really good on characters like shuna or infinite horizon akades fairy tale tenebria we are in a control-heavy meta right now. She's an excellent fourth or fifth pick in World Arena. If you've got the gear lying around to use her, her company artifact, Fairy Tale for a Nightmare, is also a really, really important mage artifact. It's probably the second best one in the game besides Ancient Book. It's very good on characters like Solitary of the Snow or Arya, who you'll note is right here under characters you should own. So if you want to play this character, this is a pretty good accompanying pickup. Holiday Euphine. Only really good is like a tech versus like Rand Cleave, and even then it's a little bit inconsistent. A company artifact is only really good on Conqueror Lilius and Immortal Wukong if you kind of want to meme, but I don't really recommend that one. It's pretty much just Conqueror Lilius, right? Landy, pretty decent in PvP, although she's largely been outclassed, like a pretty good last pick in PvP some of the time. Insane character in PvE and a company artifact, uh, Wall of Order actually criminally underplayed might be one of the most underplayed artifacts in the entire game is incredibly strong after its rework i think the reason people overlook it is because of how important guiding light is like if you could actually get a turn on landy with wall of water it's kind of insane uh lethe my favorite character that came out of 2023 very fun health scaling bruiser unfortunately outclassed by laia and just in general health scaling bruisers are pretty bad because of urban shadow shoe and death dealer right in pvp no real PvE applications. Her company artifact is really important for Hellscaling Bruisers, though. So if that's your playstyle or that's the thing you want to make work or you're just hoping that that playstyle returns to prominence later on down the line, then maybe it might be worth a pickup. 
Luna, you got a free copy this morning in your mailbox, assuming that you logged in every single day, so not really a reason to take Luna outside of getting dupes for your new moon, Luna. Accompanying artifact is Draco Plate, which is a solid mix of offense and defense. It is a limited artifact that might be worth your time, but usually there's better options. Like, Draco Plate is basically the, the fallback option if you just don't know what to put on the character. Seaside Bologna, only really used nowadays for like PvE content. You might see her in like Advent, and she's primarily used in like Wyvern 13 for some of the older guides. I know that some of the newer strats for Wyvern 13 that people have cooked up over the years since I made my Wyvern 13 guide use things like Aria, like shoutouts to Prop Boy and his like Aria Wyvern 13 clear. So she's not as mandatory as she used to be. Uh, she still has some like Abyss applications. Like overall, I'm pretty down on SSB. Uh, and her accompanying artifact is only really usable on her. Uh, take her if you like Bologna or you're following a specific guide that recommends that you need her. Summer Break Charlotte, only really for cleavers. Accompanying artifact, Mature Sunglasses, has fringe uses on certain characters, uh, like Bellion, for example. Some people play it on Navy Captain Landy to kind of like got you know get people because the character is tanky, tankier than people kind of originally thought it would be. Uh, it's a decent pickup overall, like character and uh, actual accompanying artifact. Summertime Asteria, very much like Summer Break Charlotte, only really for cleavers. Accompanying artifact is really good for not only herself, but Pirate Captain Flan. Basically, take this if you are a cleaver who doesn't have her and you want to play Pirate Captain Flan, even though she's not particularly very strong right now. Characters you should own Aria, very, very strong in a lot of aspects of PvP. Not the best, but a very good pocket character. Very good in certain situations for, like, arena offense. Very good for, like, uh, Guild War offense, right? Like, just, again, situational character, but strong in those situations. Very, very powerful. Is arguably one of the hardest characters, though, to build in the game. So, please, I know she's really hot. Do not take this character unless you have very strong lifesteal and resistance gear. Because, straight up, this is one of the most requested characters that I get to look at to try to fixed for fix it friday like people ask for help for this character all the time very rarely do they actually have the gear to play the character and i unfortunately have to tell them like you got to go back to the drawing board farm more gear so if you have very good gear uh this could be definitely one of the ones that you could consider picking up Bihu, strong tech choice versus like galilius or navy captain landy so if you're having trouble with those characters and you have good speed gear uh then Bihu might be worth a look at Brig, probably the best knight in the entire game for PvE. If you were a newer player, he's excellent for like Abyss, uh, raids, expeditions. He's pretty much like a one-man army. Again, the overall, I think, best knight in the game uh, next to like Adventure Arise for PvE content. So he's definitely somebody you want to have on your roster in case there's some kind of uh, PvE content that comes out in the future that you might need to clear. Selene, after... Finally, getting a rework is under characters you should own. She used to be under whale artifacts because she was mediocre, but her artifact is very good. Now her artifact is super good and is absolutely one that you want to whale out on. And Selene herself is like a top 10 PvP character. She's absolutely insane right now. I don't know if I would even consider trying to make a serious climb of any kind uh, for PvP without Selene in this uh, current format. Destina. Old Reliable Cleanser, accompanying artifact is Shimadra Staff. Like, the character's fallen off. Uh, Shimadra Staff is, like, really good, though. I feel like for turn two players that build a lot of effect resistance. Solid pickup, not exactly the best. Elena, staple anti-cleave character. Uh, also good for arena defense to block out certain compositions that people are trying to play. Especially if you have, like, Dragon Bride Senya. Like, Elena, Dragon Bride Senya, Navy Captain Landy, and, like, maybe Bellion. Boxes out a lot of the cleaves that people are really trying to play uh, in arena offense currently. Elvira, newest character here on the list. She denies fighting spirit. Anytime a character can straight up deny an entire game mechanic, they are worth having on your roster. She's actually pretty easy to build as well. Just get high ER and some decent speed. Bulk and effectiveness is secondary. Other than that, like it's pretty much you just slam her down. If they don't ban her uh, and they can't kill her before she gets turn one, Whatever the strategy is that uses Fighting Spirit just completely goes out the window. Isaria, staple PvE character that you should always have great in almost every single PvE game mode in the entire game. Accompanying Artifact Song of Stars, one of the most important PvE artifacts in the whole game. Lilius, like Brig, pretty good in a lot of aspects of PvE. Great in Nightmare Raid, good in Abyss, good in Advent some of the time. Also has some PvP applications. So that's why she's here. Accompanying Artifact, Bastion of Pollution. 
making a huge resurgence as well. Uh, has some great tech options with Gala Lilius, for example. Lua, still one of the most busted characters in the entire game, even though you don't see her that often. And that's because of how popular and common Laia is. But if they pre ban Laia, man, that Lua might be creeping, and she's very, very powerful still. Her accompanying artifact, Spatio Temporal Fan, is very good if you have C Phantom Politus. Nikwal is the newer, upgraded, more oppressive version of Lua. Both of these characters are just completely snapped, completely broken. Nikwal, one of the most picked, banned, and highest win rate characters currently at Worlds. Even slower players like KHM, legend level turn to player, plays Nikwal. You need Nikwal to be competitive in the current format of Epic 7, unless you are trying to just ban her out. It's either you got a banner or you got a player. Choose one. Para, huge resurgence for this character because of characters like Blood Moon Haste. Unbuffable is very strong right now, and she is the fastest character in the game at applying it. Also sets up a lot of crazy compositions for whether it's cleave or control. Gives escort to your uh, team, so basically she can function as your tank if you want it. Gives attack buff, so great support. Just overall super overloaded character on a very, very fast body. Politus, staple PvP character, punishes non-attack skills, which is more important now than ever. So if you don't have her, definitely worth a pickup. Knowledge Seed is the accompanying artifact, is pretty much garbage. Ran, the premier cleave opener in the game, the fastest character in the game, completely overloaded degenerate kit, only really worth picking up if you are somebody who has really good speed gear and is trying to play fast. Only PvE application is in Nightmare Raid, so unless you're a veteran, and don't have this character like that's pretty much the only real reason for you to pick him up for pve applications rowana completely busted passive broken in a lot of formats for pvp uh pretty much used everywhere in pvp when it's applicable uh pretty much one of the most busted pve characters in the game there's just no way i would not take rowana no matter what your skill level is she's just when she's good, she's broken. She's super easy to build as well. Accompanying Artifact, Touch of Rekos, has some niche applications. Tamarin, the best PvE character in the game, bar none. If I was going to be going for Tamarin, I probably would just get her from the Story Summon. Uh, so probably skip her, but you should own this character. The best PvE character in the game. Accompanying Artifact is Idol's Cheer, which has some niche applications as well in PvP. Moving on to Whale Artifacts, Crow, it has Holy Sacrifice, great for Abyssal Euphine, but you need it to be at plus 30. Uh, also some cheeky things like I put, uh, I don't know, Ambitious Tywin on my Arena Defense with Holy Sac so as kind of like a gotcha. Uh, Senya, it, hers is Spear of a New Dawn, only really played for Senya herself, who's not particularly very good right now. Like She has some niche applications, but if you want to play this Senya, you need Spear of a New Dawn, which is why she arrives here. Moving on, playable characters or artifacts. Alencia, only as a last pick character when you need an injury-based unit. Arunka, only really in Guild Wars when you need to destroy somebody that has a lot of barriers on their team. Basar, only here because that's the company artifact is Abyssal Crown. Bologna, only here because of the current Rift and her artifact Iron Fan. She's very good at getting you started on your Rift journey. But after that, like once you get to like Rift Controller 21 or so, she is completely useless and therefore her value plummets. Chloe, only here because she is the best character for a Banshee 13 one-shot alongside of Straze and Pavel, and her accompanying artifact, a Little Queen's Huge Crown, has some use cases specifically for characters like Arunka. Cecilia, only here because uh, her actual artifact is Rise of a Monarch, which is at least playable in PvE, and might have some really cheeky PvP applications. She's completely outclassed by Brieg pretty much everywhere in the entire game. Shu is here because her accompanying artifact is Snow Crystal, and she has some decent PvP use cases when the opponent drafts a lot of red units, and also pretty good in Nightmare Raid. Command Model Laika, here because her accompanying artifact is Glow Wings 21, which is good for slower Sea Phantom Politices. Also has a lot of PvE use cases, such as Katie's. You could also technically, I guess, play her in PvP, but I think she is kind of outclassed. Her primary use in PvP is to go really fast, and grant your team immunity when Ran is banned. Edda making a pretty big resurgence as a cleave option with the advent of New Moon Luna. Elagos always good for faster team compositions, although you're better off putting his gear on Ran and Para. But if you want to play him, he's still a certainly serviceable PvP uh, speed character. 
Urvalan, only here because accompanying artifact is Double Edged Crescent, which is great for Kron and a couple other characters. Flan, pretty much only here because, again, like Elagos, pretty good option for faster speed oriented players. And accompanying artifact is Unseen Observer, which is also very good for characters like, say, C Phantom Politus, just to kind of eke out some extra souls to play very, very aggressively. Fumir, backbone of her own cleave composition, the Fumir cleave. So if that's something you're trying to play, that's why she's here. Hua Young, still pretty decent character as a pocket fourth, fifth pick in PvP. Can absolutely destroy certain characters. Accompanying Artifact is probably the best non-limited option for Inferno Kawazu in the game. So if you want to play him, she might be worth picking up. Kawarik, very difficult character to use. Um, but still sometimes can kind of get there. Very fast, very high damage burst mage. Just very, very tricky to use. Accompanying Artifact, Black Hand of the Goddess can help supplement certain builds, uh, much in the same way that like Manica of Control can be for Sez. Uh, Kron here, just good anti-cleave character. Accompanying Artifact is Shepherd of the Hollow, which is fantastic for characters like Remnant Violet, who's getting a buff, as well as uh, Savior Auden. Yulha, pretty much outclassed, I feel like, when it comes to tanks. Not really good in World Arena anymore. Has a lot of Arena and Go War offense applications, though. She's solid but definitely one of the worst characters i feel like in this category nowadays ken has some weird use cases in wyvern 13 one shots alongside of conquer lilius you can check out tristan wolf uh, if you're looking for more details on that but he's primarily here because he's the best character in the game for ancient inheritance if you decide to go the red route after its rework kisei making a bit of a resurgence uh i feel like in the meta uh not not a ton but still pretty good when you are looking for somebody that could kind of deal with like the red heavy comps that use Genua, right? Like she's definitely one of those characters where I think people have kind of slept on her. A uh, very good PvP character if you can get her to work. Her company artifact is Alabastron, which has some very, very niche use cases. Uh, it's pretty much like largely on, uh, I'm trying to think, it escapes me at the moment, but uh sid i think it's just basically prince sid is the the character that you would actually play it on uh ludwig largely here just because of ludwig cleave uh if you want to play it he can be used on that but you're better off using his ml counterpart lulica is only here because her company artifact spirits breath which unfortunately seems to be a mandatory thing if you want to score high in the current challenge mode hall of trials to get the ml5 ees so yeah, if you're like a whale, uh, honestly, this could probably be up here. Let's be real. That's kind of its purpose is to pick Lulica and whale out on it to get Spirit's Breath. So that way you can get a high score. Uh, Pobble can be used by uh, really high-end cleavers that have very, very good cleave gear. But overall, he's not really used for that much anyways. His primary usage nowadays is in a Banshee 13 one-shot. The company artifact is probably the best in the game for Commander Pobble if you're looking to play that character. Uh, Sharoon, okay character. I feel like in PvP, not really super great. I think the primary reason you're probably picking up Sharoon is because you want Sacred Tree Branch, which is her artifact, which is pretty good on her ML5 counterpart. Teyu is here, not because he's good. I still think he's trash, even with Sea Phantom Politis, but because of his accompanying artifact, which is pretty good on characters like, say, Hua Young. Tenebria, great in Abyss. Accompanying Artifact is pretty meme and pretty decent, I feel like, on somebody like Spectre Tenebria, the ML5 counterpart. Tywin, uh, sometimes could be usable in PvP, but I don't really like him particularly for that. He's just here for Crown of Glory, which can make some cheeky defenses or cheeky tech plays in PvP. Vildred, great in a lot of PvE content, great farmer, uh, great in haunts. And also has the very, very desirable and coveted speed imprint. He's got one of the best imprints in the entire game. Accompanying artifact is great for him, as well as Ran if you are a cleaver. Uh, Violet, just all reliable character that's good versus mono blue comps. There's just certain PvE and PvP compositions that you can cheese just by his sheer existence. Euphine, only really here because her accompanying artifact is Merciless Glutton, which is good for certain characters. Like, say, if you actually want to try to play a PvP cleave Luna or maybe like Reamer Tempest. There are definitely characters that can take advantage of Merciless Glutton. Zahak, pretty good in Nightmare Raid, and also is still a pretty good pocket pick versus dodge-based characters like, say, Remnant Violet or Savior Auden. Only if nothing else, I'm not really going to cover anyone in here 
I just don't really think anything is like super worth talking about. I guess maybe Melissa for her artifact if you play Zio. Uh, or says if you want to play Last Piece Karan and don't actually have the gear for Manica. That's pretty much it. So there you go. That's, in a nutshell, everybody to talk about here on the custom group summon. So yeah, there you go. Updated custom group summon tier list. If I missed anything or you just have more questions, as always, please let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.